very good afternoon to all the participants i am going to discuss on fracture repair uh, in bovine especially the fracture of long bone management in bovine uh, my dear friends as you already know that uh, during the routine clinical practice we are regularly getting the cases of long bone fracture but despite the significant tremendous development in the veterinary orthopedic still management of uh, long bone fracture in bovine is a challenging job for us and uh, there are lot of reasons for that uh, like weight of the animal uh, like cost of treatment like paying capacity of the livestock farmer like non availability of uh, a specific size of uh, implant uh, but suppose if you leave the complicated cases Uh, most of the time during the management of simple fracture also most of the time during the management of close fracture also uh, we are getting very poor results we are not getting the encouraging results and uh, what i think uh, that that may be due to the lack of uh, basic uh, knowledge uh, regarding this uh, fracture management in bovine so that's why during in, in my presentation i have divided my presentation into two segments in first segment i will discuss uh, regarding the some general concepts regarding the fracture management and uh, in my second segment i will go through the commonly used techniques for the repair of the fracture in large animals or bovines now come to the uh, we come to the introduction as you know this uh, incidence of uh, metacarpus and metatarsus fracture is very common in large animals and uh, it contributes around 50% of the all the long bone fracture in bovine after this metacarpal and metatarsal next is the tibia then we are getting this radius ulna and uh, the fracture of humerus femur and pelvis is very rare in bovine similarly the fracture of axial skeletal is also very rare in bovine so if you will see uh, if you will see the total incidence almost 70% of the incidence of long bone fracture in bovine involves the bones present below the elbow joint and stifle joint okay now one study by adam van fessler and uh, another study by des rocher and they have found that in european world almost 10% of the total cattle losses are due to limb fracture uh, again this uh, open fracture is very common in the cattle or bovine species and uh, may most of many times it requires limb amputation or sometimes we have to go for uh, euthanasia also and again if you are going for the treatment of open fracture that becomes very there will be significantly increase in the cost of treatment of the open fracture so therefore uh, the long bone fracture if you will see we can manage either by external cooperation or we can go for the open reduction internal fixation that is ore but uh, in our country in our place we are mostly using this external cooperation technique for the long bone fracture in bovine because it is cost effective it is easy to apply and uh, in terms of material very less things are required to go for this external cooperation but uh, in case of ore open reduction internal fixation that is a surgical method of fracture fixation that requires sophisticated that requires sophisticated uh, operation theater and again the cost of treatment increases significantly that's why in our place in our country like our con developing country we are not opting we are not going for this ore we are trying to manage the long bone fracture by the external cooperation technique only now as far as concerned to the surgical judgment this is also very important in the long bone fracture management in bovine and during the surgical judgment or decision to treat a fracture in bovine this following this following parameters you have to analyze very carefully 
uh, the cost of treatment, success rate of the treatment, potential economic or genetic value of the animal, animal's weight, location, and type of fracture, and uh, lastly, the experience of veterinarian, that is also very important. So after analyzing these factors, then you have to decide a particular method of treatment for a particular type of fracture. So now I am coming to uh, my first segment that is the basic concept regarding the fracture management. This is very important because most of the time we are neglecting this uh, basic thing. But during the management of fracture, the basic things are very, very important for getting the good result. So now come to the aim or objective during the fracture management. Actually, what we want to achieve during the repair of a fracture or during the treatment of a fracture, we want to restore the lost structural integrity of the fractured bone. And at the same time, also we are trying to achieve the normal functional ability of the affected limb. And both the things, structural integrity and functional ability of the affected limb, we are trying to achieve as earliest as possible. So structural integrity means already you know whenever the bone or animal comes under the, uh, under the influence of traumatic episode that leads to the fracture of a particular bone, there will be severe displacement of the fractured fragment so we are our first goal to restore the structural integrity by bringing back the fracture fragments to their normal position. Now, you can see, I've already told you, under the influence of various forces or traumatic episodes, the fracture fragments may displace either laterally or there will be angular displacement or there may be overriding of the fracture fragments or there may be a rotational uh, uh, displacement of the fracture fragments. So you have to, so you have to, first of all, you have to bring the displaced fracture fragments to their normal position. That is very important. So my dear friends, if you will see the basic uh, basics of some uh, general principles of fracture repair, and it is more or less same more or less same for all the species of the animal, whether it is bovine or canine, more or less it is more or less it is same. So generally you must know, you must keep in your mind, you must feed in your mind that these two principles you have to apply in during the management of each or any each and every type of fracture. Fracture of any fracture of any bone you have to apply only these two principles. These are the basic principles of fracture repair. So under this first one, first principle is, that is the anatomical reduction. So as the name indicates in previous slide, I have told you under the, uh, under the influence of the traumatic episode, the fractured fragment gets displaced. So by the process of anatomical reduction, what we are trying, First, uh, what we are trying to bring back the displaced fracture fragments to their initial position or normal position, or we are trying to realign the fracture fragments. And this is very, very important. This is the first thing you have to do during the fracture management. Now for anatomical reduction, we are having two methods. First is closed reduction or that is also known as non-surgical reduction. And second one is open reduction or surgical reduction. So closed reduction or non-surgical uh, non reduction, just uh, we are trying to bring back the fracture fragments to their initial position by manipulation of limb, okay? Or by applying traction and counter traction, we are trying to bring back the fracture fragment to their normal position. But if the fragments are severely displaced in that condition, you have to go for the surgical exposure of the fractured bone, fractured fragment, and then you have to go for the reduction. That is the second method that is open or surgical reduction. Now, after completion of this anatomical reduction, second important basic principle that you may follow, that is the rigid immobilization. And as the name indicates, immobilization means 
there should not be any mobilization. There should be complete immobilization. That means, in a simple word, literal meaning of this, suppose uh, you have a pain on your table. So for making that pain to mobilize it, you have to apply some force. So you have to apply some force. So similarly, simply by reducing the fractured fragments in anatomical reduction, after performing anatomical reduction, if you leave the fracture fragment as such, then there will be, again, there will be displacement. So you have to develop a mechanism, such a mechanism that prevents the mobility, that prevents the movement of the fractured fragment. And how you will achieve this? By achieving, by neutralizing the various forces acting on the bone, that is very important. So if you, you can able to neutralize the different forces acting on the bone, my dear friends, already you know, all the long bones are continuously under the influence of different type of forces. So if you can able to neutralize the forces effectively, then you can able to achieve the second principle, second goal, that is the rigid immobilization. Okay, now come to next, for rigid immobilization, for rigid immobilization, we are having different, uh, so, uh, so this, these are the fracture mechanism and uh, these are the different forces acting on the bone, that is the destructive forces, compressive forces, uh, torsional forces, bending forces, shear forces. So during the rigid immobilization, we are just trying to neutralize these forces acting on the bone because these forces are regularly, continuously acting on the bone. So once you can able to neutralize these forces, then you can able to achieve the rigid immobilization. So for rigid immobilization, we are having different methods, lot of different techniques are there, depending upon the condition, depending upon the SPC, depending upon the type of fracture, you may use, you may apply the technique. So this uh, uh, immobilization technique, we are having basically two types of immob immobilization techniques. First is uh, external devices, and the second one is internal devices. Under external devices, we are having the external support devices, external cooptation technique that includes the application of casts and splints. And the third one is uh, this uh, external skeletal fixator. So these three techniques, that is external devices are highly useful in the management of long bone fracture in bovines. Now, second one is internal devices or uh, under internal devices, we are having this uh, intramolary devices and uh, the extra medullary devices. Now come to this uh, external devices. Under external devices, I have told you, we are having the external support devices and it includes the slings and padded bandage. And padded bandage, that is also known as Robert Jones bandage, which we are commonly using in large animal as well as in a small animal practice for additional support of the fractured limb. Now, second uh, external, under the external device, second thing is external cooptation. And this technique is very commonly, highly, it, it is affordable technique, affordable technique. It is easy to apply. Okay, there is no any critical or any uh, special or any special anesthetic protocol is required for application of these external cooptation technique. You can easily apply in the field conditions also. So this external cooptation, it includes the application of a spleen and uh, this uh, second one is the cast. So under a spleen, now uh, you can prepare the spleen locally depending upon the availability of materials. If wooden uh, plank is available, then you can prepare the wooden spleen. Some metal, you can also prepare the metallic spleen. You can also prepare the plaster of Paris spleen or PVC, polyvinyl chloride spleen, that is the, that we are commonly using uh, in our drainage pipe. So this pipe, these pipes, you can use for the, making this spleen. Now under the cast, this nowadays we are not using this plaster of Paris, Paris cast because of the poor in strength. We are commonly using this fiberglass cast, cast because of its superior strength. Only thing, this fiberglass cast is little bit costlier than the plaster of Paris cast. 
now for external cooperation or external support devices my dear friend you must remember you must feed in your mind just uh, uh, the principle for application you must include the joint above and below the fracture side then only this system this uh, uh, technique will work otherwise there will be failure of fracture fixation so you always remember whenever you are going to apply the splint or cast you must include joint above and below the fracture side and then second is second thing is 50% rule that means the fracture fragments in must be must be in to in contact uh, contact area must be at least 50% of uh, 50% that means for reduction you must first of all you have to you are going for the reduction so you must achieve at least 50% reduction then after that you can apply this external cooptation technique either a splint or cast now third one is external skeletal fixator under this uh, this technique is also we are uh, using in uh, fracture management in bovine under this we are having two types that is the linear external skeletal fixator and second one is uh, circular external skeletal fixator so linear and circular that this nomenclature that depends upon the external bar if the external bar is linear that is linear external skeletal fixator and under this we are having three types of uh, fixators unilateral bilateral and combination of type 1 and type 2 now second one if the external bar connecting bar is circular then that uh, external fixator is known as circular external skeletal fixator and this one is also highly useful in the management of uh, long bone fracture in the bovines in in bovines and this technique is also known as elijaro ring fixator now come to the components of this linear external skeletal fixator as far as concern to the components uh, you require this uh, fixation pins or key wire these are fixation pins or key wire these uh, pins may be threaded or non threaded but mostly for external skeletal fixator we are using the threaded one threaded pin uh then second one the connecting bar or rod these are the connecting bar or rod these are made up of stainless steel but uh, for reducing the cost in large animal again little bit we have uh, uh, nowadays we are doing modification in the street of using this uh, stainless steel connecting bar we are using epoxy material to fix these k wires or pin now third component is connecting clamp this is the connecting clamp fourth one is the special fourth one is special component under special component this nut and bolt and range we are using for the tightening of this nut and bolt now come to uh, next one uh, ne next one uh, this is the type one uh, extra linear external skeletal fixator you can very well see uh, we are putting the uh, spins uh, both in proximal and distal fragment fractured fragment and then we are fastening this stinman pins on this connecting bar by using the clamps and nuts and bolts so this is if you are using one this uh, uh, only single one side if you are using this connecting uh, bar then this is unilateral if you are using both side lateral and medial side that is the bilateral linear external skeletal fixator and uh, if you are using from three sides that is the type 3 or combination of type 1 and type 2 linear external skeletal fixator now my dear friends this is the circular external skeletal fixator and however in this pics you can see this is the uh, this is the application of this ring fixator for the compound fracture management in canine but uh, this technique is uh, 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 practiced uh, by dr aithal in ivri and he observed he reported that he got very encouraging results by using this circular ring fixator during the fracture management in bovine so these are the components of this uh, circular ring fixator or elijaro technique you can see these are the external rings these are the rings on which we are uh, fastening this uh, pins or key wire uh, this is a nut and bolt the range for tightening of the nut and uh, by using these connecting rods we we are connecting the rings okay so these are the 
different components of this uh, circular ring fixator now come to the internal fixation devices as i have told you this uh, under this we are having the intramedullary devices and uh, extramedullary devices under this intramedullary devices steenman pin cross pin trishner's wire kunzner nail interlocking nail link and similarly the major uh, technique under this extramedullary device is the bone plating but uh, practically in field condition this internal fixation as earlier during my presentation i have told you it is impractical to use this technique in field conditions because for application for use of this internal fixation device we need a sophisticated operation theater and uh, at the same time the cost of your treatment increases significantly and that is the reason we are going for we are opting for affordable method of treatment in bovine fracture management that is the external coaptation but it's not like that ki this internal fixation devices are not working well if high in high value animals if the owner is able to uh, bear the expenditure then if you, you then you can use the techniques also and the result of the techniques are also encouraging now uh, so same thing the low number of orthopedic surgery requiring open reduction internal fixation are carried out in general farm animal practice as i have already told you it is likely due to the economic and practical limits rather than the prognostic factors for the long term survival now come to this uh, 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 i have told you come to this you can see this yellow different techniques and the forces acting on the bone you can very well see that the bone plate interlocking nail link circular external skeletal fixator the three techniques they can able to neutralize all the forces acting on the bone that means these three techniques may provide if you will properly apply the three techniques may provide rigid immobilization but you can see here cast and splint it can able to neutralize only bending and torsional forces acting on the bone it unable to neutralize the distractive forces compressive forces and shear forces acting on the bone so that is the reason but most commonly we are using in large animal only this technique that is we are using this cast and splint for the fracture management but that is the reason during the management of long bone fracture long bone fracture in large animals by using cast and splint we are incorporating we are using this cast either along with the splint or we are incorporating this cast along with the transfixation pins or we are incorporating incorporating this cast with the hanging pin we are never we are never going to use this cast material alone especially in the heavy weight animals fully mature animals okay because of the this cast alone cannot able to neutralize the all the forces acting on the bone now come to uh, when a case comes to you when a case comes to you at your clinics so first thing what you have to do during the interaction or interrogation of uh, the owner of the patient most of the time i have observed that in the field condition simply that our primary treatment or first aid treatment or emergency treatment that includes only the administration of pain killer in the bovine fracture cases so this is the not exactly true but along with this uh, uh, administration of pain killer you must go for primary or temporary stabilization or temporary immobilization of the fractured limb that is very important because most of the time on us come and tells that initially the bone was uh, there was no any wound but after few days bone the bone pierces out from the soft tissue and from simple fracture that fracture becomes the complicated or compound fracture or open fracture and as i have already told you management of open fracture it is very difficult it is very difficult and most of the time we are not getting the encouraging result so you must include especially from my field friends uh, i request you must follow the first of all if you unable to treat suppose you have analyzed that 
you are unable to give the permanent treatment for particular fracture case so before referring before sending them sending the case to the referral veterinary clinic you must go for you must go for administration of painkiller and as well as temporary immobilization of the fractured fragment this is very important so under the emergency treatment it includes the temporary stabilization of the fractured fragment and that you can achieve by using the by using the splints and you can use the two splints or simply you can use the pvc pipe and you can press the pipe uh, two pipe at the 90 degree angle with each other suppose one you are keeping on the caudal side then another you should keep on the lateral side so during the placement during the placement of this uh, this uh, uh, pvc pipe or temporary immobilization you must remember so the basic principle behind the application of this external coaptation your coaptation device must uh, include the joints proximal and distal to the fracture site otherwise that will again most of the time we are uh, we have noticed that simply at the fracture site people are putting this uh, bandage or simply so one wooden stick they are putting and they are putting the bandage so that is again that complicates the case even the simple fracture most many times most of the times it converted into the uh, complex fracture or complicated fracture or open fracture so my dear friends whenever you are going for external coaptation coaptation technique either robert jones application of robert jones bandage or application of cast or splint you must include the joint proximal and distal to the fractured site then it will work properly so this is the emergency treatment under this emergency treatment or first aid treatment whenever you are getting the fracture cases in bovine you must administer the painkiller or analgesia and then second thing temporary immobilization of the fractured fragment this is very important now uh, come to the external coaptation this external coaptation as i have told you it is commonly used method for the fracture management in the large animals and or bovine species and under this as i have told you it includes the cast application and splint application so sometimes we are using in case of simple fracture lightweight animal we can directly you can directly apply only the cast okay simply you can apply the cast but if the animal is heavy simple fracture so we we are incorporating within the cast we are incorporating the splint also for for additional additional stability okay so some you can use this cast or splint alone depending upon the weight of the animal or you can use together okay now this uh, mostly this cast application if you will see cast application is the most practical uh, practical method for the external fixation of the lower bone fracture and it is as i have told you this cast is routinely routinely used in combination with various trans fixation devices as well as internal fixation devices okay in heavy animals if you will simply apply this cast sometimes it will not provide a, a, a proper stability of the fractured fragment that we want to achieve rigid immobilization so for that purpose we are most many times in bovine species we are using this cast material along with the trans fixation pinning so now next is cast application principle that i have already told you whenever you are going to apply the cast the joint proximal and distal to the fracture site must be included into the cast material during the application so Uh, an another rule for cast application 50% at least 50% cortical reduction is important otherwise there may be chances of delayed union or or non or non union now uh, you come to this is the picture here earlier we were using at our clean cell so we were we were using this uh, plaster of paris cast and if there is some opening or open wound is there then you have to keep one window for the dressing of the own so this is the case of uh, metacarpal fracture and you can very well see we have included both the lower joint from the fracture site the proximal joint and distal joint both the joints are included 
proximal joint that is the carpal joint and the fetlock joint you have to include into the cast for proper stabilization but nowadays we are using this is the metatarsal fracture for which we have applied this fiberglass cast and you can see animal can easily able to bear the partial weight on the affected limb so this is the cast application in large animal now cast application again it is half limb cast full limb cast if our cast we are extending the cast uh, uh, up to the stifle joint in the hind limb and uh, up to the elbow joint in the fore limb that is the long cast simply it is a full limb cast is also known as long cast that is known as full limb cast but uh, half limb cast most of the time we are using it is also known as short cast and mostly we are using for the metacarpal and metatarsal fracture and uh, under this simply we are incorporating this uh, carpal joint in case of fore limb and uh, distally we are incorporating the fetlock joint in hind limb the hock joint and distally the fetlock joint we are including but full limb cast simply we are increasing in case of full limb cast simply we are increasing the length of the cast and we are trying to include the stifle as well as the elbow joint as far as possible however there is some uh, anatomical limitations are there but still we are trying to as far as possible you have to incorporate the stifle as well as the elbow joint so this is the simple half limb full limb cast depending upon the site of fracture you can apply now uh, uh, the step i am not going in details regarding the st step of cast application because i hope all of you know very well how to apply cast and uh, before application of cast you have to restrain the animal and you have to keep the affected limb to the towards the upper side and then you need one assistant uh, who will help you in maintaining the normal alignment of the limb and then after pouring over the affected limb after pouring the some antiseptic powder either povidone powder boric acid powder zinc oxide powder then uh, you can uh, thereafter you have to cover with padding thick cotton padding you have to put over the bony prominences and then you can directly go for the application of your fiberglass cast so in case of uh, immature animals or animals with uh, weight less than 150 kg uh, cast uh, thickness may be 6 to 8 layer but the if the animal is fully matured it is more than 400 kg more than 350 kg in that condition you have to go for the cast thickness must be 12 to 16 layer then only it will be uh, provide the rigid immobilization now as i have told you most of the time in heavy animals we can incorporate some splints also and these splints are highly helpful in providing the additional support to the fractured fragment so these are the some specialized splints you can see this is the u bar made up of aluminum aluminum this is the metallic splint and you can apply you can put this splint after putting the cotton padding you can apply this u splint and this straight hand uh, straight hand this is this uh, this uh, u bar this is meant for the fore limb okay so you can after putting the cotton padding you can apply this uh, aluminum splint and then you can directly apply the after then you have to fasten this splint either using the adhesive tape or you can uh, thick cotton string you can use for the fastening of this splint with the limb and then thereafter you can apply the fiberglass cast similarly uh, in case of hind limb at the level of the hock angulation of hock you have to bend this splint also accordingly and this you can use for the management of fracture metacarpal fracture or distal uh, metacarpal fracture you can use this u bar in case of hind limb simply you have to slightly you have to bend it because of the angle of hock now come to next uh, so this is the uh, step wise process this is uh, steps involved in the application of cast material so this is you can see this is the metacarpal fracture and uh, metacarpal fracture before uh, applying the cast you have to pour the uh, on the limb uh, this uh, antiseptic powder that is the zinc oxide or you can use this boric acid powder or povidone iodine powder you can pour throughout the area and then you can go for the thick cotton 
padding especially the you have to cover the dew claws and the whatever the bony prominences that you have to cover properly with the cotton padding so this is the cotton padding then uh, you have to apply this uh, aluminum splint u splint okay this is the u splint already applied then here you can see we are going to fasten this uh, u splint with the limb by using the thick cotton string or you may also use the adhesive tape also you may use but here in large animal it is better to use this thick cotton string that will be more effi efficient so after application of this splint again you have to put uh, one layer or two layer this uh, normal bandage and then lastly you have to go for the application of this fiberglass cast okay so this is the final finally after the application of fiberglass cast you can see so this here this technique here we are involving we are using the cast material along with the splint u splint we are using for the management of meta carpal bone now here the suppose there is fracture of the meta carpal here you can see this is the open fracture of the meta carp meta tarsal bone and uh, here this fracture before going for the application you have to first of all close the wound this soft tissue you have to put suture you have to close the wound and then you have to same procedure you have to follow you have to apply antiseptic powder then uh, cotton padding then one or two layer normal bandaging okay and then if there is because there is open wound such you have to keep one window at the open wound so that you can regularly after the application you can able to clean the wound so thereafter you can apply this uh, bar or a splint aluminum splint and then lastly you can apply this uh, fiberglass cast so you can very well able to see in the picture that this window is kept for regular dressing of the wound because however this window uh, it reduces the overall strength of this cast material but we don't have any option if you will go for complete closure of the wound that may be lead to further problem so therefore you have to keep you don't have any option you have to keep opening for the regular dressing of the wound so this is the final picture after completion of this after application cast material now come to next our technique so this is the cast application along with the splint now next technique is transfixation pinning and casting so this is also very important technique suppose if there is a proximal tibia fracture proximal uh, radius fracture in that condition especially in mature animals you because of the anatomical limitations we unable to incorporate the proximal joint into the cast material okay a stifle joint it's very difficult to incorporate especially in a mature animal and if if you by for by forcefully if you will apply also then there may be chances of after some time there may be chances of slipping down of your cast material that will result into the fixation failure so in that condition what we are doing we are going for the transfixation pinning and casting and this is transfixation pinning is nothing we are putting two or three pins we are transversely through both the fractured fragments okay in proximal fragment two or three pins also in the distal fragment two or three pin you have to insert and then after insertion either you can able to use some external connecting bar type uh, uh, like things like aluminum rods we are using to connect these pins and then you can apply the cast material as i have told you earlier during the cast application so in this technique simply you have to so this is you can see this is the transfixation tpc transfixation pinning and casting this is the open fracture of uh, uh, tibia and in that condition see how we are stabilizing we are putting the transfixation pin pinning we have done uh, you have to pass the pins through the bone in proximal fragment and uh, in distal fragment and then you have to then you have to stabilize or fasten the pin you have to put some splint like external connecting bar like thing that is here we have applied this uh, iron rod and then after putting this iron rod then uh, you can go for application of this uh, fiberglass cast so and uh, before application of fiberglass cast the protruded part of the pin you have to bend it okay 
we have to bend it otherwise this will disturb the application of cast or it may puncture the cast material and that may lead to the decrease in the overall strength of the cast so this is the another technique that is the transfixation pinning and casting material so now next important technique is hanging pin cast sometimes suppose the here in case of tvr fracture if the in this case open fracture that's why you have used this technique transfixation pinning but suppose this condition is if you are getting the closed fracture or simple fracture of tvr in adult animal so most of the time if you will simply apply the cast material after some time there may be your cast material may slip down so there will be fra fixation failure so to prevent the slipping down of your cast material just what we are doing we are passing one pin transcortical pin transversely through the proximal fractured fragment and uh, this will and then we are going to we are going to apply this uh, fiberglass cast so this pin proximally inserted pin this will prevent the slipping down of the cast material okay so the purpose of this application of this pin is simply to prevent the slipping down and at the same time up to some extent it prevents the or it neutralizes the or torsional forces or rotational forces acting on the bone so that means this will further improve the stability of your fracture fixation so this is hanging pin cast now this is modified i have told you during the uh, basic concepts that uh, under linear external skeletal fixator we are having different techniques unilateral bilateral and uh, uh, hybrid one okay so but here we have slightly modified the technique to reduce the cost of your treatment and uh, slightly we are modifying the technique so this is the case as you see five month old calf was there and a history of road traffic accident clinical finding we observed that there was fracture of proximal metatarsal bone fracture was oblique fracture and there was open wound also so under the gelagin sedation and uh, lumbosacral spinal analgesia we have uh, 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 tried we have uh, treated by we have immobil immobilized the fractured fragment by using modified external skeletal fixator so here in modified external skeletal fixator you have to again you have to pass either four or six pins or k wire through the proximal fractured fragment and through the distal fractured fragment and in instead of using the external connecting bar metallic connecting bar either circular or linear here in this particular case we are for reducing the cost of the treatment we are using this epoxy material or fata fat this material is used by the plumber some plumbing work so plumber they are very routinely they are using so that material we have applied for uh, uh, for fixing this protruding pins and you can see and we are we have got uh, very good results in this particular case so you can able to see animal can able to use the limb animal can able to there is no any uh, problem in uh, with this uh, fixator in in this particular calf so this is uh, all about this uh, uh, bovine long bone fracture management in bovine in simply and some basic things i have touched so if you have any query uh, you can ask